Welcome everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here. Um, I have the pleasure of had, uh, working with three fantastic credit players these last two weeks. I'm so proud of their growth and everything they've accomplished here. And it's a pleasure uh, for me to work with them and, uh, in this setting as well. Uh, our first student, or fellow rather, is going to be here, uh, Max yes. Reese. Uh, today we're going to be going to do things a little bit differently than we have in the other classes. If you had a chance to join us for the other master classes, students perform solo works. Uh, in this case, today we're going to be exploring orchestral excerpts. And to give you a little bit of a context as to um, why we study these, um, to, in order to uh, earn a position in an orchestra, these young students are have been studying so hard these orchestral excerpts, and they're very short. They typically can be anywhere between 15 seconds to maybe a minute and a half, maybe a slight little bit longer. But they put so many years and effort into understanding the uh, style of each composer and really honing their craft physically to execute these for a panel, for a committee behind a curtain. So oftentimes, um, uh, you know, they'll put a lot of uh, financial um, effort into going to these auditions, traveling, lodging, you know, getting ready, getting their best instruments in the best uh, shape possible to perform for these committees in hopes that they advance in the subsequent rounds. And of course, the person that wins, you know, it's like catching lightning in the ball at times. So, uh, you know, we take many, many auditions over the course of our career. It, you can kind of think of it as the Olympics. In a sense, you've studied for many years to play like just like a vault at the Olympic Games. It's done in 15 seconds, and a lot of years and work and hard uh, uh, work went into that one vault. So similarly for us, we we're training our bodies to be able to do this and to interpret what these fantastic composers left for us and for all of humankind. So uh, with that said and done, let's go ahead and next week you perform for us today. So we can start with um, Beethoven six. First and second and then we can go to shots of provision nine and second and third. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, so we'll get to the four tag. I'm just going to slide on that one time. Yeah. Good, that's right. Now let's take that subdivision out and then we're going to be nice and clean on that rhythm. Special 
so that they're memorable in the most positive way so that that principal polo player can say, I want that person sitting behind me in my orchestra. I want to work with that person. But if you play everything academically, which is what obviously we're in school, we're trying to teach those fundamentals to our students, and you don't grow or you don't express that through a curtain, this is a, a velvet curtain that's right in front of you in a big hall, it's a little intimidating, but if we can't show that, then they're going to pass on you. They're not going to vote for you. Okay. So that's what we're, we want to do: is elevate that, uh, these excerpts to a point that everything is so special, so thought out, and just creme brulee. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One creme brulee. So okay. So um, great. Okay, good. How are we on time? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's go to the next one. We're doing uh, the second. Uh, Good, now try 
write it now in context. Blossom. 
we're very, very, um, I mean, I wish there were more opportunities for us to use it. So in this case, see what you can do more with that air. Let it blossom a little bit. You don't have to come out of the piano texture, but definitely show us the, the direction. Right? Um, 
and then we change instruments. So the instrument's hot versus cold and so forth. So a lot of those kind of things happen. Okay. Um, articulation texture, I think, is really important here. Um, you have the fluidity uh, of, of the style and whatnot. Um, because this is, there's a lot of shape, even within this texture, this is what makes it difficult. Play for me the first seven notes. Slur. And weave the air through the break. You heard it. So there's one note in there that tends to be in the low register, and we have to give it a little bit of zhuzh to make it like the others. One more time. So, yeah. Um, how does it relate 
get to the notes in between the sextuplets, not just the sextuplet in the run itself. It's 
clarion to throw. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let's, there's a lot in this one. Okay, so let's go back to your original starting place. Here, for some reason, we're, we're trying to compress the rhythm of the six seats. Which tells me either the tongue on the reed is not touching the same place, or the reed is not touching the tongue in the same place, or the distance that the tongue and the is traveling away from the reed is not the same, or that the air is fluctuating. Four different things we have to go through to kind of find about the issue. Play for me this and see which see let's first of all let's check. Is are we touching the reed in the same place? Let's answer that one. So eight plus? Yes, uh, even four. You can, you can call it, if you hear it and stop and just say, yeah, that's it. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, it's just the aware, but I'm thinking about all of those things. I don't, so I couldn't tell you which one. I that's okay, okay. Now try the one that's over the break. Equal that out. I think the same thing is 
point the top. Make sure you're using the front um, taste buds only so that the air doesn't get wide or doesn't slow down as we're going from long to short. <laughs> Right? 
practice this for me. Ya da 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 da. That little thing already exposed something that we need to go back and fix. One more time. Which of your fingers is late? Ring or first finger on the bottom hand? Ring. There we go. 
just a couple of things for you to go back and kind of think about and, um, and just be aware that sometimes one note or two notes are being affected by like placement that um, sometimes your tongue might be a little behind the fingers, but that's all a question of the efficiency of how you're using, you know, what you have, right? So um, you're doing great, so fantastic. All right, let's stop here. All right, good. It's not always 
to the same kind of sound that you've given us before.
each note has still shape, even though we're releasing it, it has shape. Try that ba, ba, one, two, ba, ba. One, two. The top note wasn't quite as good as it's here there. Totally understood Brahms. Absolutely cut my vote 100%. Yeah, good. All right, let's keep going.
copy speech or longer aspect of it. I think uh, in general you have the right idea of this. We're going to look at the Andante Maestoso. So it's, a, it's an accent mark at the end of a slur. And we want to make sure it doesn't come up. It has more of this weight. Uh, we see this, it, it, uh, you know, in so many different places um, with, with this style of music. And, and I want to make sure that you, you get that. Let's start right there. Intent. 
So show us, be very good. Again, right there, or whatever you're going to do, but be very clear with how you shape the line. The two things goes into it. Yum bam hira. Then it gives you a chance to come away.
I think a lot of times we tend to be afraid of the silence in the room when we get to these dramatic moments. It's like, oh, and they keep playing. And you can really draw your audience in. Uh, so that happens, of course. <laughs> Thank you.